I'd like to read something to you that I found very interesting in um, the scriptures. And we were, I was reading this, I somehow stumbled upon it at church uh, in Luke chapter 16. And uh, yes, you ought not to be surprised that we read in the Bible quite a lot. So, um, and before I start reading this scripture, I want to I wanna complete, um, set out a thought about what I'm reading. And that's... Uh, the reason why we cannot seek visions or have a complete knowledge is, is very it's, it's very ex very much explained in this uh, passage of scripture in Luke chapter 16 and I'm going to start with verse 24 and I find this very unique on two levels and I'll get to that in a moment and in verse 24 we read and it says and he cried and said this is uh, Lazarus and uh, you know, about the rich man, of course. And the rich man uh, says, and he cried, and he says, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. And verse 25 says, But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides all, oh, excuse me, verse 26, And beside all of this, between us and you, there's a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. And he said, excuse me, verse 27, he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou would send him to my father's house. Uh, meaning send uh, the messen messengers to, to his home. He was worried about his family now that uh, he, had, he had passed on or he had died. And so he, he's re recognizing this awful state he found himself in. And now he's starting to think about his family. Verse 28 says, For I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, lest they also come to this place of torment. And it's interesting, this conversation that uh, the rich man is having with Abraham, who was a prophet of his dispensation. Um, and, and it's interesting how uh, he's working through Abraham. I know a lot of people and uh, opponents and uh, critics to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints have, uh, have often said that we, it's folly, it's foolishness for us to think that there are such things as prophets of dispensational times. Um, they, they've uh, accused us on, on many occasions to, of, of regarding Joseph Smith as such a prophet, uh, which we do regard him as a dispensational prophet, a key to the restoration, and uh, and someone that uh, will be involved in highly involved in, in the judgment of Israel as well as of the world um, in the days to come. But I digress. I want to get back to this verse, which is interesting. In verse 29 we read, it says, Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And, you know, this might not come to a shock to many of you um, that, that understand that, that, that faith is not to have a perfect knowledge of things. It is it's to hope for things that are not seen, which are true. And, uh, that, you know, many of us understand that, you know, or, or think that maybe if we see an angel or if we see God's hand in our life, that somehow that's magically going to help us have faith or we're going to change. Uh, you know, likewise, uh, in the story of Cain and Abel, you know, Abraham, uh, um, Adam and, and, and walked with God and, and Cain and Abel, they all saw the Lord. They all saw and, and, and walked with him. And, and, you know, but that wasn't uh, what would culture the faith necessary for us to follow God without without sight, you know. And, and verse 30 and 31 just kind of helps stamp that one down a little better when, it, when we read, And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if, I, but if one of them went from the dead, they will repent. You know, so you, you, got, you got this difference of opinion with a man who had no faith thinking that, you know, if he saw visions or if his family saw angels, that somehow, miraculously, things would get better. And uh, verse 31 says, And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, 
though one rose from the dead. So, there you have it again. I actually think it's wisdom in our Father in Heaven that that we, we aren't surrounded by angels, that the angels are, aren't just down here all the time going, hey, you better follow God, you know, or else you'll go to the bad place, you know. I, I think it's, it's wisdom in our Father in Heaven to allow us to seek after Him and to try to have faith. And I know not everyone's going to find Him in this life. And I know that it, it's not possible for, for everyone to hear the, in, the gospel message in its fullness in this life. Um, but it saddens me. It saddens me to read in the scriptures and to realize that uh, apostasy has, has, has been going on since the very first. It's been going on since the days of Adam and you know for a while. And then uh, when the great flood happened, you know you would think that the the three families and, and Noah and his wife, so the eight of them, I guess, uh, on the ark. You know, you you would think that all three of his sons would have said, you know. Wow, God just saved our life. It's amazing. You know, it's, this is the true path. But it's amazing that still only one third of his family was was able to say, "Yeah, I, I want I want to continue receiving uh, the blessings of the Lord. I, I want that birthright. I want um, to uh, perpetuate this in our family." And and literally millions and millions, even billions of people have come since then. And, and until there was just this little band of Israelites for a while, you know, and, and they were just kind of going along, and, you know, and everyone thinks, well, if God really loved everyone, he would have done all that he could to save them. And, you know, he would show up and just say, you know, follow me and do all that. But, you know, but this scripture right here in, in Luke chapter 16, verse 39, explains it all. It explains that, you know, we, we would not follow God by sight. In fact, I think it would probably make our states even worse if we were to see our Heavenly Father and then for have, then, and then for have us not to follow Him. It would be worse off for us than, than if we were just to follow Him by faith. And so that's me my message for you today. That, uh, and, and hopefully that explains a little bit more why um, our Heavenly Father just doesn't send us visions. He will send us visions if we have faith. He will... He will make our callings and elections. He will help those callings and elections to, to be made sure for us by faith. And, and, and at that moment, when our Heavenly Father knows that you know, there, there is nothing else that we could possibly do in this life based on our, our choices and based on our, our resolve to do what's right, that the Heavenly Father would grant unto us those things. And I, I, I am a hypocrite. And I've done so many wrong things, and I continue to do wrong things. And you know, I in no way, you know, am staring at this camera and, and talking to you in a position of of authority that could suggest that 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 I am living a perfect life. Um, and, and although I have many, many views of my videos, and, and I hope that they're blessing your lives, and I hope they're blessing the lives of, of many others uh, unseen, um, I am just a man, and I'm a man with many faults, and uh, I can only hope and pray that you and, and the rest of the world, as well as our Father in Heaven, can forgive me for those faults. Um, but I'm just like you, walking by faith and hoping that uh, all those things will be made known unto me and to the rest of us and in due time, of course, and in the due time of the Lord as well as in the times and, and seasons that we're ready to receive them. I'm very grateful for uh, a loving Father in Heaven who's given us a plan that, that we may come down here and exercise our free agency to live and to do as we choose. And he's given us that opportunity so that we too might come to know the mysteries of the universe, the mysteries of the, king, the kingdom of our Father in heaven. And uh, line upon line, precept on precept, we're able to learn those things. And I say these things to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.